My name is Christian Holman I'm from Holman Fine Art. Um, I've been in the Coachella Valley now for almost 16 years, got here at the end of 2002, so this fall it'll be 16 years. And I've had my own gallery, Home and Fine Art, uh, now for about nine years here on El Paseo in Palm Desert. Um, I've been doing this pretty much my whole life. My parents actually started the gallery in the 1970s. We, uh, a couple of years ago, we had our 40 year anniversary for my parents' gallery. Um, they started that in 1976, um, so I was just barely walking at the time. And once I was uh, old enough, I got into the art business. I studied art history and economy in Germany um, when I lived there. But at the same time, I already started the gallery business, so I always had a gallery on the side. And I was, um, for a short while, the youngest gallery owner in Hamburg, Germany. That's where I had my first gallery. The first project that we did with Grit Development in Palm Springs was Isabel. Isabel was a very ambitious um, sculptor by Julian Vos Andre. He is a, um, also a German who immigrated to the United States well, probably more than 20 years ago. And he's a quantum physicist turned sculptor. He was actually an artist at heart um, before, but he was so gifted really that he um, studied quantum physics in Edinburgh and in Vienna and then moved to the States and he is known for sculptures that disappear from a certain angle. We actually have one here in the gallery if you want to um, take a look at that. That's the Slender Sentinel and from, from, a, from a straight on angle they, they disappear and the idea about that is that on a molecular level, in quantum physics, on a molecular level there's nothing but space between matter and he wanted to visualize that in his art. So we, um, we connected him with Grit Development who, who is developing um, the whole block in front of the uh, Palm Springs Art Museum under the, under the leadership of Michael Brown uh, and that includes the Kimpton Hotel and so um, Michael commissioned Julian to build um, a seven foot seated woman and she's called Isabel and she can be seen um, uh, right, it's kind of in front of the Kimpton Hotel between the Kimpton and the, the commercial area in that Paseo towards Museum Drive. Um, out of that first project, uh, an even more ambitious, crazy really, a project was born and that was the David Cherney Babies. Um, Michael had called me into a meeting and he had shown me a construction site, an empty construction site between the Kimpton Hotel and the Palm Springs Art Museum and ultimately it will be developed into a residential building but it's probably going to take at least maybe two, three years and so in the meantime Michael was willing to use that site for an art project and he brought me on board to see if I had any ideas and it was almost serendipitous that at the same time, like literally maybe a week before, I had talked to David and um, it had turned out that the Tower Babies, um, a very large-scale installation of ten naked faceless babies that were crawling up and down the TV tower in Prague in the Czech Republic would become available because they're rebuilding that set. The, the city owns it but they're rebuilding it to make it, make it more sturdy, new materials, whatever. And they would give him his set back. And all of that happened at the same time and we were able to convince David to lend this installation to the city of Palm Springs, or better, Michael, um, at no cost. Um, and so that's what he did. I'm actually standing next to one of David's more manageable pieces. It's still about 400 pounds heavy. Um, it's a resin skull and inside embedded are three-dimensional objects that appear to be x-rayed. It's, it's really mind-bending when, when you look at this up close and so is really all of his work. The, the babies have sparked quite a little bit of controversy. Um, the, the public, there's seems to be very divided. People either love them or they don't quite 
get it. And one of the most common questions that we've been getting is what's with the faces? Because instead of a face, these babies have an imprint of a barcode. And Czerny wanted to convey the idea that our society is really trying to dehumanize us. Basically, you know, th this tendency of slapping a number on everything and everybody and wanting to make everything measurable. He wanted to visualize that and he wanted to really touch people. You know, I don't want to say he wants to disturb them, but the problem really in today's day and age, you see teenagers running around with barcode tattoos. That doesn't seem to rattle anybody anymore. I, I mean, they even think it's cool. What they don't really know is that only 70 years ago, people were numbered and sent to concentration camps. So it's really, you know, the, the fact that they're putting the equivalent on, of a number um, on as a, as a tattoo um, and think that it's cool, is, that is really disturbing that they don't know history so well that, that there, there is a really disturbing part of history where that was done. And so Czerny felt that if he had, let's say, taken a sculpture of, a, of, a, of, a, of an adult and put a barcode on it, nobody would have even taken notice. But when you take a baby, like the most precious thing known to humankind, and you take the one thing away that makes it individual, the face, and you put a barcode, then people are really touched and, and disturbed, quite rightfully so. But it gets the message across, and that's what David really wants to do. He wants to create a little bit of controversy. He wants to stir up people. He wants to um, put a message out there that, that will rattle people, as he did right from the start. I mean, the first art project that actually got him on the map was in 91, when he was still a student, and in a rogue overnight action, he painted a war memorial in Prague, a Soviet Union tank, the color pink, and put a middle finger on it. I don't think I can do that here on, on public TV, but you can you could get the picture. And they actually threw him into jail for that. So criticizing government got him imprisoned as a young man. And so the fact that, that you know, he can voice criticism through art um, is very important to him, and so you know, giving a strong message was was meaningful to him. Um, it is not a message to the people of Palm Springs. That is some. That's another question that we've been getting a lot: is like, why do you put this here in Palm Springs? And that was not really the point. The point was that we had a building site that was otherwise empty and unused, and that we had an opportunity to put world class level of art, like really of an international level, and bring it to Palm Springs. And that was an opportunity that we didn't want to pass up. Um, so when, when Michael offered this site and David offered to lend this, this world famous installation, we just put one-on-one -on -one together and we just made it happen. And that's where I came in um, to, to kind of handle the whole logistics. But it was an opportunity that was fabulous, but when people say, well, what message do you want to give us? This is not a message to them. It is just an opportunity for them to see great art. And with that, I hope that people will go and check it out. And if, if, if you go and you take pictures, post them on Instagram, hashtag Palm Springs Babies. We would love that. And we also created a website, www.palmspringsbabies.com, with more information and background information on the artists and the project. And if, if by any chance you are in Palm Desert, uh, it's only a half an hour drive from Palm Springs, and you want to come and check out our gallery, we're on, we're on El Paseo in Palm Desert, 73660 El Paseo. Come and check us out. We always love to see you. Thank you.